Hey, what's going on, guys? Joe McCall, the real estate investing mastery.com. We got a great guest today. His name is David Lecco. A lot of you have heard of the Deal Machine app. This is a driving for dollars app that David kind of brought to the center stage of real estate investing, pretty much invented the concept and made it, you know, huge. And it's an amazing tool. It's one of the best ways to find deals driving for dollars. Now, we're going to be talking a little bit about driving for dollars, but we're mainly going to be talking about how AI, artificial intelligence, is changing the game for real estate. Uh, David has developed one of the most successful real estate investing softwares in the history of real estate investing, to be honest. And he's killing it right now. He's known as one of the, you know, the premier experts in our industry and in our space for software and all things software and online or whatever. So we're going to be talking about how artificial intelligence fits into all of this. Does it, can it really be helpful for you? Um, is it of any good? Is it of any use? Who knows? But I can tell you this, I've got a lot of friends that are using Deal Machine for their driving for dollars. Now, I have used it in the past. I'll be honest, open book. I'm not using it right now because I'm doing vacant land deals. And with vacant land where we're flipping out in the middle of nowhere, I'm not paying people to go driving for dollars. Although, I know somebody who's doing driving for dollars for vacant land. But we're going to be talking mainly about artificial intelligence and how you can use artificial intelligence and tools like Deal Machine to actually grow your real estate investing business, get more leads, make more offers, do more deals. So if you're interested in that, I want to check, I want you to check this out right now. If you go to joemccall.com slash deal machine, you can actually try it for free. If you go there right now, joemccall.com slash deal machine and check it out. You can get it for free. Hey, David, how are you, man? Hey, Joe, it's great to be here, man. I'm doing great. Glad I'll say what, it, one reason why it's good to be here is because I remember going, you, you've been in the industry longer than me, uh, but I've been for about, you know, six years now and went to the family reunion event yes. and could not believe how everyone gave you a standing ovation when you walked in the room because you were the goat. And it's not because <laughs> you're a goatee. They really did believe and do believe you're the greatest of all time when it comes to teaching people, you know, how to build financial freedom in their life. So it's awesome to be here on your podcast. I'm humbled by that, and I kind of forgot about that. But um, <laughs> glad you're here. Listen, give us a brief history story, David, of Deal Machine, and how did you start it? Yeah, so back in 2017, my life sucked. I was working as the only software engineer at this company, where, and I had to also be the tech support person. So that meant if the software had a bug or went down, I had to answer the call and then fix it. So I brought my laptop with me everywhere, slept with it under my pillow, took it to the bar. And I even had to miss part of my friend's wedding because the system went down. I was the only developer this software company wouldn't hire a second developer or a support person. So man, if anybody wanted financial freedom, it was me. I was like, I gotta get out from under this burden because I'm not even getting any upside in this business. Yeah. I've got to actually get some upside if I'm going to grind away and put in that kind of work. And so I started doing some, so I, I kind of actually got the idea from Rich Dad Poor Dad that I needed to either own a business or I needed to own rental properties. So that way I could own a piece of that and get some recurring revenue. And so I went looking for a house that would cash flow, except none of the properties listed for sale seemed like they were going to cash flow. The mortgage payment was going to be too high compared to what it could rent for. So I was kind of discouraged. On top of that, the guy who owned my software company said his rental properties only cash flowed because he bought them in 2008. He's like, you can't buy these kind of cash flowing properties now. Right. So I was discouraged again, but I kind of just didn't give up. And I went to a real estate meetup, found a bunch of people who were finding these great deals. And they said, go look for rundown properties, write them a letter saying, do they want to sell their house? If so, give me a call. And so I went looking for rundown properties. Now here's the hang up. I was feeling great, feeling motivated, but, and it was a lot of fun to go look for the houses. Actually, I was learning a lot about my neighborhoods going on streets I'd never seen before. And uh, then it hit me. So I actually saw a property that was under construction and I knew that I drove by that house before. And I was like, oh, I drove by this house. This is my house. Why is, how is somebody else working on this? So. I went and looked up who owned the property and sure enough, somebody just bought it for a price that could have been a great price for me. I could have bought it for that price, 
I felt like and actually done a great deal. But I didn't get to it because I didn't even reach out. And so I was like, man, I got to solve my follow up problem because I'm having a trouble following through, uh, which is just something a lot of humans uh, yeah. here have trouble with. And uh, my solution, since I knew a little bit of code from my job was I just made this basic app for my phone, wasn't on anyone else's phone. It would let me pin the house, connect to the county records to show me right then and there who owned it. And then I could actually send a letter, uh, kind of integrated the app with a company that would print and send my mail for me. So I did that. And then I would repeat, have the app repeat that every you know three weeks actually, so that wow. they would get another letter. Cause I knew follow-up was important. Just basic marketing advice, follow-up was key. They're not going to respond on the first letter. So anyway, I made, I built this widget for myself, use it for about nine months before I realized it's something other people would want to use it too. And short story long, you know, I've got 11 rental properties, uh, almost $200,000 in rental income, wow. um, about 70,000 net off that. Uh, so that, you know, I've, I've, I've kind of achieved my initial goal, financial freedom. The app though, didn't even mean for it to be a business took off and that's become its own business. So short story long, that's what happened. That's why I started getting into real estate investing. I love that you, you found a need and you just created something to fulfill the need. And exactly. I wasn't trying to convince anyone of anything. I was like, I want this. I don't care what anybody else thinks. Like I'm going to use this. Did, was there any other driving for dollars app out there at the time? Yes, there was an app out there, but it didn't have all the pieces. It yeah. let me build a list by pinning houses, but it didn't tell me who owned the house and it didn't send mail. So it wasn't going to solve my follow up problem, which was my main thing that I was going to solve. So th this is really cool. Somebody, is wondering, I'm sure out there right now, what is driving for dollars? What does that mean? So can you explain that real quick? Yeah, so driving for dollars is a age old, decades old way of finding great real estate deals. You go look for rundown properties and those are going to be properties that if they need to sell, you can get at a discount because they can't sell it on the with the realtor. And uh, they also probably don't want to put the money in to fix it themselves to sell it. So um, it's one of the best lists because you could buy lists of people that might want to sell, but the people whose houses look run down uh, are the ones that really probably have to sell to an investor if something happens in their life because their house is run down. So, and, and it's also a good list because you can't buy that list. You have to make it yourself, which means less people have it, which means the people, the sellers are getting less mail, less communications, less solicitations from investors. So you, your offer kind of sticks out. And well, so those are a this couple is so reasons. important. You're absolutely right. Yeah. This is so important because you think, well, I could everybody's just going out and getting a list, the same list that everybody else is getting. But there's not a list that you can go buy and download of rundown derelict homes. And even the quote unquote vacant list that you can download, most of those houses aren't even vacant. So when you can go actually driving for dollars and looking for houses that the gutters are falling down, the grass is is, is raised. Um, there's a bunch of junk everywhere. Usually that means there's some distress going on. And either the owner is in the house and is maybe checked out. Maybe they just want to get rid of it or soon will. Or the house is vacant. Or there's a frustrated landlord who owns that house and that tenant isn't taking care of the property. And the landlord's getting tired of getting all kinds of code violations and cease and desist orders and notices from the county or the city saying take care of this property. And probably that landlord's not getting consistent normal rent every month from that tenant. So this is a list that you can't buy anywhere else. And it's not so it's 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 a way to go look in the best neighborhoods to find the properties that need updating. They look like they're falling apart. They look like they need a lot of updating. And then a lot of those properties too, I'll say this, may or may not be your typical list that you get, right? It could be it could be a owner occupied or it could be an absentee owner owned property. It could be a vacant property, it could not be a vacant property. It you know, they they they're all over the board and when you can get physical eyes on this is what I love about the strategy. When you can get physical eyes on it, um, that nobody else is doing this. Right. Any type of barrier like that is worth going through, especially if you're new, because all these big time investors like Joe, they, they'll, they'll spend money to go get leads. But if you don't have a ton of money, you do have time, right? And so a lot of people just don't take the time to build this incredible list that's going to give you a higher ROI than pretty much any other list that you could buy. 
I say this all the time, David. If I were to, if you were to drop me off into a new city, and I had, I couldn't go home until I made five, ten grand. Th this is what I would do. I would go driving for dollars, number one, and number two, I would start getting on the phone and calling. After I drove for dollars, and then downloaded the list, skip traced them, called them, sent them letters. I would also then be on the phone calling landlords and calling realtors and just trying to find deals over the phone. But like those two things are what exactly what I would do, especially if I didn't have much money, because how much does it cost to drive your car around mm -hmm. and just pin properties on an app, skip trace them, call them from your phone while you're right there in front of their house. Right. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, a big, big time investor will spend 20 grand per month buying a list and sending lots of mail out to it. The yeah. reason why driving for dollars is so much cheaper is because you have to send a lot less mail if you're sending mail to that list. Um, and so the cost really comes down to maybe you're only, you know, sending uh, a thousand postcards out to get a deal. And then big time investor may have to send five, 10,000 postcards out to get a deal. Yeah. Okay. So here's the cool thing though. And then we'll get into AI, I promise. Um, sure, absolutely. You don't have to be the one doing the driving yourself, do you? How does that this work true. where you can hire other people then and they can, what, log into your app and post leads into your deal yeah. machine? Yeah, so the app will let you add on like a team member and the team member can add properties for you. Uh, they could click track routes. So you could see where they actually drove. So they actually make sure they uh, drove a certain number of hours if you're going to pay them hourly and you can tell what neighborhoods they drove through. Um, that way, uh, they can also add pictures of the houses that they add, which I recommend for two reasons. One, the picture will show up on the postcard, and when a homeowner re like sees that, they know it's like not a Google or satellite image. They know and can tell you were actually there. So I'll get calls all the time, it says, hey, I got a bunch of postcards, but I called yours, because it looks like you put a lot of time into doing this, and it looks like you're actually there in front of my house. I love it. The other thing yeah. is you can actually make sure they're adding the right types of properties that you want. So you don't really want properties in perfect condition. And you also probably don't want properties that aren't worth a lot if they are fixed up. So what I mean by that is um, if they're in a neighborhood where literally all the houses are burned down and none and of the properties are yeah they, more than 40 grand you can't fix the house up like that and then make money if, if nothing else in the neighborhood's worth 40 grand so that that's why you want to have them add pictures that way you can be like hey this was a good house because the gutter was falling off this one it looks perfect why'd you add that one they're like i don't know and you're like okay great well don't add perfect houses again add some with overgrown bushes or peeling paint or a full mailbox or you know any of those signs that show that the house is like a little off compared to the rest of the street yeah Okay, really good. And, and again, I want to tell you guys, go to joemccall.com slash deal machine to get it for free. joemccall.com slash deal machine. Try it out for free, rather. You do have to pay for it eventually, but try it out for free. So, David, the software is amazing. Um, the, it, it does cost the investor, me, who's getting it. And there's different levels, and you can have different drivers doing this for you at the different levels. But then the dr person doing the driving, they don't have to pay for this, right? They don't have to pay for the app no. itself. It's when, yeah, when you add a team member like that, they wouldn't have to pay. No, that's okay. correct. Cool, and so um, talk about AI. It seems like everybody is talking about artificial intelligence. Um, yeah. what, what are you doing with AI inside of Deal Machine right now? Okay, as you would know, as somebody who helps people get financial freedom themselves, a huge barrier is people get stuck in analysis paralysis. And so in order to combat that, when AI came out earlier this year, we said, let's integrate ChatGPT in a deal machine, which is an advantage because now it can know real estate data because it's actually, you're talking to it through deal machine. It has access to that real estate data, which ChatGPT typically doesn't. So ChatGPT, you can ask it like, hey, analyze this property for a wholesale deal. And it can help you figure out how to analyze it in that chat interface. It's so easy to use like ChatGPT would do. And it's actually helpful with math because it's, it's got access to what the comps are. It's got access to what properties sold for nearby. It's got access to what the properties assess. And it knows general rules of thumb about estimating rehab costs, for example, based on square footage and how serious the renovation needs to be. So all these questions that hang people up that are just starting to do this for the first time, this is we're showing that this can actually help people get over the edge and take more action. So 
that's that's exactly what it is and it's it's like a chat interface um you can chat with it openly like you do chat gpt or there's about 12 you know paths that you could go through such as analyzing a property for a wholesale real estate deal as an example now did you already go do the work of programming chat gpt on how to evaluate a deal or so like how does it know that already Right. So it does have access to the internet. So it knows what the 1% rule is and it knows, you know, it may cost $17 to replace carpet and paint in the, you know, per square foot, for example. And so it, it just knows that stuff, but now we can give it access to what the square footage is and what properties have sold for nearby. So it can help calculate a reliable ARV uh, and a chat interface. So that's how it works. Um, and, and I'm really pleased with the way that it came out. Um, and it's, it's just as easy to talk to as chat GPT. So you can do this inside of deal machine, inside of the software. You would do it inside of deal machine. Yeah. You just like pull up a, a house and the AI will actually pop right up there and you can ask it uh, a question from there. Um, so give us an, give us another example of like, you pull up a house, you're looking at it. What is the exact text you type in? Okay, well, there's a button, analyze this property. How do I get in touch with this seller? Help me write an SMS to this owner. Help me write a cold call script, calculate the offer price. Help me find a title company that's investor friendly nearby. Help me calculate what? repairs on this property. What? Help me practice negotiating. Well, yeah, yeah. And how do I find cash buyers for this property? How do I find renters? Those are the predefined you know, t uh, routes that you could go. Uh, and of course, though, you can also just ask it your own question. <laughs> All right, so you got this house, you're looking at it. Could you tell, could you say chat GPT, what, what do you think this house is worth? Would it, oh, absolutely. Would you... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Really? Yeah, why not? <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, let's look at this. I wish I could share my screen, um, but I'm gonna go chat.openai.com. I don't have Deal Machine open right now. Mm -hmm. How much well, you, is... You, yeah, you can't do it through another software like that because it doesn't oh. have access to real estate data. That's ah. why it's, it's unique to be using it through Deal Machine. That's what I was we, wondering. Because we give it access to, it can access our real estate data. Ah. Okay. Because I'm typing in a, the address of one of my properties here. It says, hey, we can't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. but that, it, To uh, find yeah. out the current value of your property, I recommend reaching out to a local real estate agent. Oh, come on. What? Okay, so you're saying this is, I'm glad we clarified this. This isn't something somebody can just go to chat.openai.com right. and type in an address and then have chat GPT tell you, you know, based on the square footage, what the property's worth or how much repairs it might need or how much you're, you're, you're feeding it in advance through deal machine under the hood. You're feeding it with real estate data. Definitely. Yep, exactly. That's the nice. difference. That's why it's novel. Okay, that's really cool. What's another example of what you could do with it then? Like, um, you know, if you're on the phone with the seller or maybe if you're negotiating with it, how does that, how does that work? Well, yeah, okay, so I gave you the 12 paths that are most common. That, that's what we've kind of come up with and realized people need the most help with. But you could also say, hey, the seller said this, what, what's the best way for me to respond, you know? and you may not be able to like type in the middle of a phone call, but if you get off the phone and you're like, man, I came up with this objection. Uh, this is what the seller said. You know, what's, what's the best way to go? So, you know, it, it, it's not as good as Joe McCall, right? But it's pretty, it's, it's helpful, correct? Cause it knows like general sales uh, techniques cause ChatGPT knows the actual internet up to 2021. So sales hasn't changed that much since 2021. So that's gonna oh, yeah. be a question that it, it would be able to help you with pretty well. I imagine too, you could use it to, you know, if you don't know how to use a financial calculator, you could probably put in something along the lines of, um, you know, if, if, if I, if the house, if I buy a house for a hundred grand and I put 10% down um, and I'm paying the seller with owner financing and I'm paying the seller 6% interest, what would my monthly payment be? Oh yeah. You could definitely do type that. Of that mm -hmm. type of thing too, right? hundred percent. Wow. It's crazy. And so are you, how long have you had this inside of Deal Machine now? This has been inside of Deal Machine for two months. Okay, cool. What's been some of the feedback you're getting? Well, I'll say like 20% of the people 
20% more people pick the, the pro plan rather than the beginner plan because it comes on the pro plan. So just immediately when we offered this, we put it uh, in the like onboarding and showed them, this is how it analyzes a property. Do you want this? Okay. And 20% more people are saying yes and, and deciding to get that pro plan, which is, it's, it's 99 bucks a month. So it's only a little bit more than the starter plan, but um, that was a, like a major factor that told me this is actually helping people. Okay, so the starter plan is 59 bucks a month. Correct. Pro plan is 99 a month. Correct. That includes up to and three you, users. Yes. 55,000 leads per yes, month. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, cool. And you get the uh, real estate AI assistant. There you go. Yes, sir. Route planning. Talk about route planning. What does that mean? Route planning is if you go get like a water shutoff list from your county and you're like, hey, these people have their water shut off. That means they're probably either not there, not paying their bills and they may need to sell their house. They might be in some financial trouble. And you say, well, I could text them or maybe I just wanna door knock them, see who's there right now. Plug that list into Deal Machine and say, route me to all these properties. And it's gonna take you to the, in an optimal way to go drive by every single one of wow. those properties, lay eyes on it, then you could knock on the door, see who's there. That's what a route planner would be. Okay, cool. What if you, um... You know, you've got you got your one or two drivers that are doing the driving for you, and um, you tell them, "I want you to go into this area." Can you highlight the areas you want them to go into, and then it tracks them, and you can see, you know, are they are they going in the area that you told them to go into? Does that make sense? Yeah, we don't have a geofencing. You would tell them go okay. to these neighborhoods, and then after they drove, you could see yeah. where they actually drove. Cool. All right. Mail sequences, what does that mean? Good question. I love these questions. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> uh, you're just starting out, just send the same postcard every two, three weeks. That's what I would recommend. It uses our language that just is tried and true. It's gotten a lot of deals and it's very simple. If you're really fancy and you wanna start testing things out, then you could use mail sequences, which would send a first postcard different than the second postcard, different than the third postcard. but. I'll just say this. I think the simpler is better when you're just starting out and you just want to add properties that look run down and then communicate with the owners. However, you're going to do that with mail, with phone calls, text, door knocking, and, and really everything else is a distraction. I would just focus on adding properties and sending mail. But if you're sophisticated, we do have the sequences. If you want to change what the postcard is on the second, third and fourth time. All right. So you're also saying like if I have if I'm paying a driver to go out there, um, I can change his permissions where he or she, they can't send the mail for me. They add yeah, it, course. right? And then I, after I see it, it looks like a good potential deal. I can then send the mail. Correct. Okay. Because I'm sure somebody's thinking, well, man, I don't want my driver to just all of a sudden spend $1,000 sending postcards to crappy properties. Yeah, exactly. Okay. They have permissions where they can't see even the owner if you don't want them to. Okay, so you've got a driver like, what are some, what are the, what are the average number of houses that somebody who's driving for dollars? I know it depends on the zip code in the area. Let's say just a good class B, class C rental neighborhood, you know, where if you're in the Midwest, you can buy properties for a hundred to 200 grand and they're renting for a thousand bucks a month or 1500 a month or whatever, kind of a good class B, class C neighborhood. Homes are built in the fifties or, you know, 1950s or later or whatnot. Okay, so you're driving those neighborhoods. Um, how many leads can you actually see and put in to Deal Machine that might be potential properties within uh, an hour or two hours? Does that make sense? Yeah. In a yeah. So okay. What I what I would recommend doing is if you're if you're looking for a property that's maybe like perfect condition worth two hundred thousand dollars. Uh, that'd be like a Midwest market, like St. Louis, where you live, like sure. Indianapolis, where I invest. I would say you need to add 400 rundown properties and communicate with them each three times in order to get one deal. Okay. So okay. that would be, I think you can add, if you're adding photos, um, I think you could probably add like 12 to 15 properties an hour. If you're adding 25, you're probably in a neighborhood that is too rough. You know, you probably, probably shouldn't be driving for dollars there because the properties probably aren't going to be nice enough. And if, if you are adding like two properties per hour, you're probably in a neighborhood that's too nice. You know what I okay. mean? So there's kind of a sweet spot I found that, you know, maybe 12 to 15 per hour. 
Okay, so that's very good to know. So if you're in an area where you're getting 12 to 15 properties an hour that you're adding into Deal Machine, and that's with you, you know, you're driving, you look at your phone, you see a property, that looks good. You pin it, take a picture of it maybe, you add it in to the database, you drive on to the next one. Um, so when you're driving, you're just, you're just looking for properties. When you get home, then you, all the information is there at the, on your computer in the browser over the Internet, right? You can see the properties there, and then you can, um, if you're getting 10 to 15 an hour, so if you're doing this for three hours, you're getting 30 to 60 of them, you know, let's say 40 of them. Um, then you're saying if, if you, you need about, on average, the numbers you're seeing, you need about 400 of these properties to do a deal. 400 divided by 15 would be like to, uh, 26 hours. Yeah, yeah you're going to be, you're going to be doing some driving. Okay, but hello, that's not a lot of money. I mean, like, it's a lot of time. But if you're, you could do More that in one week, a couple right. weeks, what if you did that in one month? If you could do one deal a month and you can make a $10,000 profit, so 26 hours to, do, to approximately round numbers are not promising or guaranteeing anything. But let's just say 25, let's say 30 hours of driving to do one deal. And you took 30 hours divided by four weeks. That's seven hours of driving a week divided by five days. That's about an hour and a half of driving every weekday. All right. That not a lot. And then that is, is that cold calling or is that just emailing them or, or I mean, sorry, not emailing cold calling and sending them letters. Um, or is that because the numbers will change then too, won't they? Yeah. I, so most of our users send direct mail. So if you take 400 properties, contact them three times each. Um, it's 1200 postcards and it's actually going to be 55 cents per postcard. So it's like 660 bucks is oh. your, your expense to get a deal. Okay. Again, th this is why this is such a good list and you can't buy this list. You only have to send 1500 or so postcards. Is that right? Is that what the number yeah. you said? Mm -hmm. About 1500 postcards. Hopefully we're getting our numbers all right to do a deal. Like normally if you're sending, if you're buying a list of absentee owners with equity or something like that, you might need to send 5,000, 6,000 postcards to do a deal. So you don't have to do as much direct mail. And I was talking to Zach about this. Um, you, you don't have to do as much direct mail to do a deal when you're doing driving for dollars. I was talking to Zach Booth about this and he was telling me, Joe, um, the way he structures his drivers, he pays them a certain amount of money per hour to drive plus a certain percentage of his profits. So some people try to do pay other people driving for dollars and then paying them commissions out of the deal. The problem with that is people flake out really quickly, right? Um, but if you get somebody good, you can pay them 20 bucks an hour to go driving for you. And then at the end of the day, your cost per deal is still gonna be less than doing direct mail, paying somebody to drive for dollars on an hourly basis. Does that make sense? Plus, and when you're new, you're going to get a lot of benefits from driving around and learning your neighborhoods oh, yeah. Doing your as yourself. well. Yeah. So that you're going to get the double, you know, bonus of, of that. Yeah. Super cool. Um, what do you, the guys that you're seeing in, in companies and girls, whatever, that are doing this successfully, David, what are you seeing them do consistently on a regular basis? Like what are some of the best practices? Yeah. Add, adding properties and sending mail. I mean, Every that's day. really it. not focusing on too many other things, not focusing on their CRM, just focusing on revenue generating activities, adding those properties, sending mail uh, or calling, but typically they're sending mail uh, at deal machine. That, and that, that's really, it's simple. You know, it's like, it, it, it's, it's, if you complicate it too much, it just kind of actually kind of hurts people I've noticed when they're starting out. Sending postcards. That's do right. You, do, you, do you, some of your best users send the mail and call them, do both, or just send the letters and talk to anybody who responds? Yeah, some do both as well, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Some feel more comfortable making a cold call if they've already sent a, a piece of mail and then they can have like more of a warm intro to be like, well, I sent you this mail and you know, did you get it? You know, that's like more mm -hmm. of like a, oh, yeah, like they like to use that sometimes. What if, what if maybe on the second or third mail, you send the seller an offer? Then when you cold call them, you say, hey, I'm just following up on that offer I sent you. Yeah, you know? that would be powerful for sure. Oh, yeah. Loved it. Um, okay, cool. Uh, 
certain mistakes or things to avoid when using Deal Machine? Biggest mistake is uh, somebody will say, this does not work in my market. My market is too saturated. There's too many people doing this in my market. And I'll go look at their account and they've added 12 properties, Joe. And I say, well, it just didn't, you didn't put enough work in to get uh, any results, right? So a lot of times I, I felt a uh, victim to this as well. When I was first starting out, there was a rundown house right outside my subdivision. I had the bushes so huge, taller than the house. Couldn't see any of the windows because these things were just so overgrown. It looked rundown. And I, I just sat there and thought about that house all the time instead of what I should have done is just found more rundown properties because they don't need to sell. They don't, I, they don't owe me anything, right? Just because I found it doesn't mean they owe me anything. doesn't mean they need to sell it to me. But that's how I was acting when I was just obsessing over this house. Um, but I should have found, gone out and found more rundown properties instead of trying to like convince them or like, you know, manifest it, whatever. Uh, so that's, that's what I would say is a huge mistake. A lot of people encounter is they get too hung up on these properties they find right by their house and think they deserve to get. Instead, you should just keep driving around new areas and find more rundown properties. Yeah, that's a great way to get, to get leads. And again, you could drive the same neighborhoods every six months and find new opportunities, can't you? Yeah, because like one, one property I bought and then a tree fell while I was renovating it. The tree wasn't cleaned up for like two weeks. So new stuff like that can happen and you don't know it unless you drive by it. So I finally got a hold of that seller and they sold me their house too. Thankfully, uh, they had no idea a tree fell because the mom who lived there was with her daughter two hours away helping out. You know, she would just gotten divorced, she had a baby. Her mom was, was two hours away helping and she ended up just permanently moving in with her daughter and just wanted to get rid of this house. Didn't want to deal with a tree. Didn't want to deal with fixing the roof or the water damage that ensued. And so I got to buy this house from her and just handle all that aggravation for her. So that was pretty cool. Glad I was in the neighborhood, even though I had driven it recently to, to take advantage of something new like that, that had happened. You know, I've done a lot of deals where I've partnered with other wholesalers and I'm thinking of somebody listening to this thinking, Joe, I'm already so busy. I got my full-time job. Uh, I'm trying to do vacant land. And now you're talking about deal machine and houses and stuff like that. But here's, here's what I'm going to be doing. Um, my son and his friends want to make some extra money. I'm like, okay, well, go drive for dollars for me. Okay. Go into, I'm just going to go in and see what the hot zip codes are, where most of the investor activity is going, where it, what it's doing. I'm going to have them drive those zip codes, put the deals into deal machine. They're going to come in and I'm going to, we're going to send postcards to them. Any lead that comes in, I'm going to talk to that seller, negotiate with them over the phone, try to find out their situation, where they're at. I have other friends who are wholesalers in St. Louis. The last thing I'm going to do is get out of my chair and go look at houses. I, I don't like going to look at houses. I don't like meeting sellers in person. But you know what I'm, I've got? I know five other friends in the St. Louis area that would love to go talk to sellers and go meet them in person. If I can't get the deal under contract over the phone, I'm going to give it to one of them who they can then go meet with the seller, look at you know how much repairs actually needs to be done, build some rapport with the seller, and then they can take the deal from there and then flip it and split the profits 50-50. I've, done, I've made hundreds of thousands of dollars doing that by being the marketing engine, generating the leads, doing the initial pre-screening over the phone, and then sending it to another local boots on the ground guy who then can get the deal under contract, who can then do all the work of getting the money, closing on it, flipping it, has the, you know, has the contracts, has the title companies, has the private investors, hard money lenders, already has all the relationships. And then you can split those deals and, uh, and split the wholesale profits 50-50. Done, done tons and tons of those deals. And then once you learn how to do it in your own backyard, what, what, what's stopping you from then hiring, finding another wholesaler that's doing a lot of deals that wants more leads and saying, hey, if I do your driving for dollars for you, and if I do the marketing and I pre-screen the leads and send them to you on a golden platter, would you want to split those deals with me? Here's the cool thing about all of this. It can all be managed inside of the Deal Machine app. So you can make sure that you see everything that's going on and managing it, you can manage it all inside of the Deal Machine. So you're not actually the one doing all the work. You're not the one driving yourself. You're not the one that is going to the house to look at it. 
You're not the one who's trying to find the buyers or bring the money or find the title company. You can just hire people to do the driving for you and you can partner with local wholesalers that do all that work for you. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Oh yeah, it makes sense. Of course it makes sense. I mean, David, when is the last time you went to go look at a house and negotiate in person with a seller? Man, uh, so I just started buying properties again. I, I bought like 10. I stopped buying them because Deal Machine took off and became the bigger money maker. And then I, I kind of stopped paying attention for three years and I went back and looked. They appreciated a million dollars collectively <laughs> over that wow. period of time. Good for yeah. you. Yeah. So I thought, damn, why I should have had more houses, right? That would have been amazing. So now I'm going to buy houses. So I'm, I'm uh, closed on the second property this year. Um, from Austin, the house is in Indianapolis and I talked to the sellers on the phone and then I ended up sending my handyman in to go meet them and just see what the condition of the, verify the condition of the house, give me an estimate. And then that's how I actually make my offers now. Love it. When you, uh, can, can you manage like this, this deal machine also act like a CRM? Can you update the status of the leads in there? Can you yes. track it all the way through? You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, like a lightweight CRM features, right? You can update the status, you can add a note, you can add a task with the time. And so that's pretty much your CRM features that you got. Does it integrate with, for the techies out there, does it integrate with Zapier so I could send information? Yes, from it the does. Deal machine? Okay. Mm -hmm. So that just means like, if it's in Deal Machine, you can zap it through Zapier to whatever CRM you're using, FreedomSoft. Maybe you're using Trello or Google Sheets. You can send the information in and out. Right. Yeah, exactly. You could definitely send information in and out with staff here. Okay, cool, man. Any parting words of advice? Um, anything I forgot to ask you about? Yeah, so I would just say like uh, the biggest mistake people make is they quit too soon. Like I said earlier, they think that it doesn't work in their market uh, or they just get they just quit too soon. Right. And then they go do something random like Bitcoin. So, you know, definitely talk to somebody in your market that can tell you some numbers. Right. So talk to somebody who's getting deals driving for dollars and say, well, how many do you think I should add? How many times do you think I should mail them? How much do you spend to get a deal? And then double it for your first deal because you're gonna have lower sales skills than them. So you need to account for learning. And so that would be my advice. We also uh, talk to different customers around the country who are, you know, have gotten their first wholesale deals, made a big check from an ugly house uh, on the Deal Machine Real Estate Investing podcast on uh, Spotify and, and iTunes. Um, it's it just started to grow uh, the last few weeks, which has been exciting since we started uh, just about six, cool. month, six months ago. What's yeah. it called? Deal, the Deal Machine Real Estate Investing podcast. Awesome. That, Stay tuned. I'm but in the meantime, guys, if you like what we talked about here, go check out uh, Deal Machine. Go to joemccall.com slash deal machine. Get a free trial of it. See if you like it. Take it around for a spin, see how it goes. And uh, appreciate you, David, being on the show. Don't go anywhere. Hang on a bit. Um, we'll see you guys later. Take care, everybody. Again, joemccall.com slash deal machine. We'll see you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Joe. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for watching these videos. If you like my channel at all, please hit the subscribe button. Get the notification bell thing clicked so you can get notified when new videos come out. Really appreciate it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Comment down below, all right? Thank you.